You're going to leave here refreshed today, period. Um, this, this word, it, it, listen, it's not going to be my preaching, but this word's going to captivate your soul. This word is going to apprehend your soul is, is what's going to happen. It's going to grab a hold of you. And how it works in our life is we have to lay hold of that which has laid hold of us. So when the word lays hold of us, we grab back. Does that make sense? We, I mean, you got to grab it. That's, that's your job. That's what you're here to do. There's so much information of, th- th- that's out there. But there's so much misinformation of God. There's so much misinformation of his kingdom. And it, it's all over the map. There's going to be a couple things that really bug me, that really annoy me, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch right in the mouth today. And, and I, 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 I'm telling you, there's things that have, have crept in. The one thing that Jesus hated was religion. And religion makes it about me. And, and, and you listen to me, and it's about me and what I think and what I believe and what my opinion is, and irregardless of what God's Word says. And, and most people believe God is able. But the issue that many have, the question people have, is he willing? And you know what's interesting is that we're not here wondering about God's ability. We're here wondering about God's will. That's what people people say, well, I don't know what the will of God is in my life, or what, what's the will of God? I'm gonna, I'm, I've got to buy a house, but the interest rates are going up. What's God's will? And but, but, So listen, God is able and God is willing. Understand that. God is never going to withhold any good thing from you. You should write that down. See, but, but here's, here's the problem that I have, is that religion starts talking about the sovereignty of God. And I believe that, that there, there's a, l- l- let me just lay it out there first. You know how many times sovereignty is mentioned in the New Testament? Zero. But we, we hear it talked about a lot, the sovereignty of God. It's never mentioned. The only reason sovereignty came into the picture in the church is when the NIV Bible came out. And it's mentioned a few times. And what they take is they take God Almighty and the Almighty God, and they translated his, the, the sovereign God or the sovereignty of God. And, and so we look at that. I believe God's sovereign. Like, you know, we're a sovereign nation, so we're not beholden to any other nation, but we have laws and standards and principles as a country. Well, that's how God is. And we have to understand that every little thing is not God. And I'm going to prove that to you today. It's one of the things I'm going to take a whack at. Um, But there's people that will say everything's the will of God. You know, there's there's the hits that you guys are taking. Those hits aren't the will of God. I'm just telling you, all right? And you may disagree. This may thin the herd. But I'm telling you the truth. And I'm going to prove it in God's Word today. Today, we're going to go into the Word. And listen, it's going to be refreshing. And you'll say, well, how are you going to do that? It's going to stabilize things. See, what we're all looking for is stability. But there's so much unrest. There's so much division. There's so much turmoil in the world. It's like there's no there's no stability out there. Well, we're not looking to get stability from the world. If you are, you're going to get shook. Everything that can be shaken will be. Well, the bottom line is the world's just getting shook apart. It's just flying. I mean, the wheels are flying off every time that we turn around. And and then with, with why are these things happening? Well, it just must be God. Must be God what's happening in the Ukraine. It must be God what's, what's happening in human trafficking. It must be God. And we know all that's bull. And we have to understand that. Shouldn't things be easier for us to, to naturally defend and naturally complain, uh, explain? No. We're not here to explain things naturally. In this world, you're going to have tribulations, what Jesus said. But then what did he do? He flipped it, he flipped it over. And it's like, it's like your, the coins in your pocket have two sides. One side is, in this world you have tribulation. The other side is, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. See, that's what we have to look at. See, that's always God's response to things. Is you're going to overcome. It, it's like it, it, God's will is similar to his voice. 
And see, we preachers use vernacular like, well, God told me, or God spoke to me, or God said. And then so it hence it's got people, people who walk up and they'll say, wait a second, you heard God? It's like, well, yeah, was it audible? Well, how can it be audible when God's in me? So no, it's not a natural hearing. And see, people aren't going to understand unless they're new creations in Christ. See, I get God's voice because I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, the, the, the new thing now is I've got an inner voice on the inside of me. I have an almighty knower on the inside of me. And see, but everything's got to match up with God's word. See, and I'm not one of those people that say, well, you know, God can do anything. You've heard people say that. Well, God's almighty can do anything. No, he, he can't do anything. He can't lie. He can't change. He can't prefer you over me. He's no respecter of persons. See, that doesn't limit him. That brings liberty to my life that I can trust God's word. Because God's word's never going to change. Everything in the world changes, which makes it a lie. See, the, the root definition of, of lie is something subject to change. So the facts of your life, the facts is that your, your, month's, your month's bigger than your money. The facts is that, man, you're, you're, you're going through a tough spell in your marriage. But let me tell you, facts change. The truth never does. So we find the truth, and that's where our stability is. You feeling me? That's where our refreshing is. See, lazy theology in this time it's, uh, see, here's the deal. Information today is like an avalanche. Like Google at some point today after the service, Google an avalanche and find a video of an avalanche. And then picture yourself walking into and under that avalanche. You would never do that. But see, that's what information is today with the media, with social media, with, with everything that's out there. And, and so, so much of what, what I feel like sometimes I have to do is counter the other information. It's like, no, I'm just going to present the truth. And then you know what? You choose which report you're going to believe. You choose whose report, report you're going to believe. See, I, I, and I'm going to prove it today in his word. God has given us the kind of freedom where we have responsibility of our lives. Why do people do what they do? They want to. You know, people that'll say, well, I, 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 didn't, I never wanted to do that. I, I, just, it, I just got caught up in the moment. Or, or man, it, just, it was little by little. I just got, I, the trap got set. No, I get it. But at some point, it was a choice for you to take that route. And let me tell you something. And this is going to twist your ear a little bit. I believe God warns us every time. I'm telling you, if this direction is the wrong direction in my life, when my first step is going like this, I've got to check in my spirit. I know I'm going the wrong direction. But guess what? It's not that big a deal. Oh, look, I'm fine. And then one day you wake up and you're like, how'd this happen? How'd I get here? You know what we're doing is we're blowing through not yellow lights, but red lights. And let me tell you, you're going to get, be able to get by with blowing through red lights until you don't. And see, what God wants to do is he wants to make it comfortable for you to blow through, blow through red lights. And man, I'm bulletproof, and we're not. See, so what, what God will do, God will always, listen to me, he will always give you a red light. But then you've got to choose whether you're going to obey that red light or not. See, there's three things that we have to have as believers. We have to have obedience. We have to have, have, have submission, and we have to make a sacrifice. Now listen, all of those are impossible. It's impossible for me to be obedient. It's impossible for me to be submissive. It's impossible for me to always have to be sacrificial in my living. That's impossible. That's why God put his spirit in us. So that it's not. See, in James 4, 7, the Bible, James writes and says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. So, so here's what we look at. We submit to God. The word submit is, is that we relinquish our rights. 
You have the right to do whatever you want. You have the right to do wrong things that you know are wrong, but they're legal. Paul said there's things that are lawful, but not expedient. There's things that we can do, and it's lawful, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up killing us. It's going to end up robbing our lives. And when I say killing us, it may not be a natural death. But it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, let me tell you, you could kill your marriage. People are doing it every day. You could kill your children's future. People are doing it every day. Your career, your future. But see, you know what? God gives life to the dead. So what we've got to do is we've got to follow after him to have that kind of life. See, this, the kingdom is God's way of doing things. This is his house. We're going to do it his way. Man, we're going we're gonna to honor people here. We're going to love people. We're not going to judge anybody. We're not going to condemn anybody. We're going to forgive everybody. And you know what else we're going to do? We're going to give. And then what does the Bible say? God will give back to us. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over that men will give to our bosom, that, that, that your life will be full of God's favor. How do you have that life of favor? You don't judge, you don't condemn, you forgive, and you give. Well, and why is it all about money? What about the judging and condemning part? Well, you know, you preach it's all about money. Well, okay, let's make it about money. The measure you give is the measure you receive. So the way you give is how you're going to live. I can play both sides. I can play the game, the whatever game. Why? And I'll tell you why. Because the Word of God is the truth. And it pierces. It pierces our soul, separates our soul and our spirit, our bone and our marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. So here's what James said. Submit to what is God. Now, I don't have to go to church. Really? Let's rejoice when we go to his house. Let's not forsake the, the assembling of ourselves together. Well, you know, that, that meant this. Would you stop that stuff? Submit to what's God. Resist what the devil tempts us to receive. Here, can I, can, can you, can I use your pen? Good, good throw. Anybody else got a, get a pen? You got, here, can I, can I borrow your pen? You guys are the worst. <laughs> can, 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 can I? No, no, stop. I, I'll put it in your hand. That's me resisting the pen. So you're like, oh my gosh, the devil. He came. He does, he's not coming in this red, a red suit with a spiky tail and horns and a pitchfork. He's coming as comfort. He's coming as ease. He's coming with shiny stuff or pretty things. We have to resist it. How do we re resist it? Just the way I did. And you know what? When, when that happens, he's got to flee. He doesn't just slope his shoulders. And... No. He's got to go. It's easy to resist him. It's like this. I'm not sure I got to go that. Okay, I'm not. That's how easy it is. See, we go back to Joshua 1, 5. Joshua 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But, and I go to Joshua 1 a lot. So, so Joshua 1, 5 says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Stop right there. Any enemy you have won't be, be, just won't be able to stand against you. Any enemy you have. Alcoholism won't be able to stand against you. Drug abuse, pornography, rage, debt, poverty, any kind of illness, any kind of sickness won't be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And let me tell you something. Our God's a jealous God. Our, the vengeance is his. He's got an indignation. Anybody that messes with you has to mess with him. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people 
You will divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Listen to verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all according to the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse 8. Now listen to this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do all according to what's written in it. For then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have success. One condition on success and prosperity in your life is that you meditate in God's word day and night. See, here's what's interesting. Well, I don't know if I could do that. That's going to take a lot of discipline. No, the discipline that you use with social media and the discipline you use with God's word, flip those disciplines. How about the time you spend in, in, in God's word, spend that much time in social media a day. The time you spend in social media, spend that much time meditating in God's word a day. And you'll say, oh my gosh, I don't know, it's that much fun. Really? Let me ask you this. Is prosperity and success fun for you? <laughs> How many of you guys are going, no, 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 I don't want to be prosperous. Nope, God can only love me if I'm poor. I got to be broke to be holy. Hopefully that group of people are dying off in the body of Christ. <laughs> I think I just said that. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's like, oh, no, no. No, I got to be poor. <laughs> really? Poor people have influence because rich, evil people use them to keep their influence. I'm just telling you how the world turns. Two things to focus on here are, number one, you shall meditate in God's word day and night. Now, meditate isn't like you get on your hands and knees and on a mat and face the east and hum. That's not what meditation is. Meditation isn't, I got to clear my mind of everything. No, meditation is actually verbal. You have to mutter God's word. You have to, the, can I tell you how I do it? You guys have, that have been, how many of you guys have been here 10 years? Okay, so a thousand times you've heard me meditate publicly. I'll get up, something will trigger my spirit, and I'll say, I'm the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. No weapon formed against me will prosper, yet everything I put my hand to will. I'm created in Christ Jesus for good works, that I may walk in them. God, I hear your voice and another voice I won't follow. You know what I'm doing? I'm meditating. That's all I'm doing. So I'm meditating in God's word, and I do that all the time. I've got grandbabies. That's how they pray at the end of the day. I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we creating here? But what, what meditators? And that's what we want to do. It's not about memory verses. Let's wake up. It's not about our devo. It's not about, well, my quiet time. It's day and night. It's day and night. It's every single day. We keep it on the tip of our tongue. We keep him in the midst of our heart. And then you'll make your way prosperous. And then you'll have good success. So number one is, that you meditate in his word day and night. Number two is, you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. Do you understand God's taking no responsibility for your prosperity and your success? God is taking no responsibility for your prosperity and your success. He's given me that responsibility. Do you know how liberating this is? Is God's will for you to be prosperous? You know is God's, a synonym of prosperity is peace. Is, is, God, is it God's will for you to be successful? How many of you guys are raising kids? If you're a failure, your kids aren't going to be attracted to the way you do things. You know what your job is? Can I help you, Sheldon, what your job is as a parent? To help divide the land that God promised you to your kids. You saw that in the Word, didn't you, in Joshua? In 2 Peter, the first chapter in the Amplified, grace and peace. Grace is God's power. Peace is His prosperity. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the true, intimate knowledge of God 
and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace, God multiplies his grace and peace to us based upon our knowledge, the knowledge we have of his word and his promise. Now, now, now listen, I just want to bring in perspective. God's grace is his power. What's the, what's the opposite of power? Weakness. When I'm weak, so you're going to have weak moments. You're going to have weak, a, a weakness is going to be a part of your skill set. There's going to be things you're not, you're not strong in. But guess what? Paul said, when I'm weak, is made his perfect strength. Why? He multiplies his grace in my life, his power, his supernatural ability, his favor in my life. See, you know what God's going to make you, whether people like you or not, God's going to make you attractional. Because let me tell you something, people are attracted to blessing. And God's blessing is going to be attracted in your life because he multiplies. He doesn't just add. He multiplies it. And, and you'll say, well, by what? The Bible says some 30, some 60. So it doesn't start at doubling. It doesn't start at times three or times 10. It says some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. It's like, oh, wait a minute. So my $100 just turned into $10,000. My $10,000 then turns into a million dollars. My million dollars turns into a hundred million dollars. My hundred million dollars turns it. Yes. That's how God multiplies into our life. And yeah, you know what? I just use money to get your attention. What if that's your health? What if the health you're in right now gets turned into a hundred times that health. And then what if, when, you, when you're a hundred times healthier than you are right now, what if it turns into a hundred times more health from there? Do you understand what I'm saying? God multiplies this. For his divine power is bestowed to us everything necessary for life and godliness, that God gives us everything we need for life and godliness. Through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. That we've got to know, it starts with us knowing personal knowledge of God's nature opens our lives to everything pertaining life, his life in us, and our lives being godly. This is, this, this is so easy. It's so, the equation's so simple. God gives us what we need for everything pertaining life and godliness. For by these he has bestowed on us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may escape from the immoral freedom that's in the world because of, of disreputable desire and become shares of his divine nature. Why does the world do what, the, what, what, it, what they do? Why do people do what they do? Because they have immoral freedoms. See, God gives us freedom. We can use it morally or we can use it immorally. And God gets blamed for all of it. You know what? Your choice is not the sovereign will of God. How do you get to heaven? It's a choice. Well, do you believe it's forever? Sure, until you make a choice not to. You could, you could make a choice to deny Jesus as Lord of your life. In Galatians 5, 6, it says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. This is key. This is the central point of this message. It's our faith works through love. Our faith works because God loves us. So my responsibility is to trust God. Why? He loves me. How can you trust God? Because he loves me. He's, he, he wants so much more for me than my earthly father ever could have wanted. God's provision to heal, to provide, to protect, to transform our lives, all work in us because God loves us. See, that's how we raise our children. God loves me, so I'm going to raise my kids in that love. We're going to get through this because God loves me. Man, I'm going to overcome because, oh yeah, God loves me. So, you know, so much so that the word says that I'm the apple of his eye. (laughs) 
I'm his favorite. That's what, that's what his favor produces in our lives. His favor produces, he treats us, he loves us as his favorite. He gave his son. Jesus was at God's status and came as a man on this earth because God loves us so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomever believes in him, it's awesome. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness. Yeah, God's able, but I don't know. That's not the will of God. There's, there, there, there are people I've heard that are on, I, I, on television years ago. This, this woman dove into a pond that had a sign, no diving, and broke her neck and is a quadriplegic, and now her testimony is that God allowed it and orchestrated it so that she could have a platform to preach, and I'm, I'm screaming at the television. That's not God. God didn't do that. The sign said, don't jump, don't dive. You dove. That's why it happened. The Lord's not slack concerning his promise. The Lord's not slack. Has God promised health in your life? He's not slack. It's going to overwhelm you when you realize all I've got to do is trust his word. But his long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come. Man, I listened to, okay, I'll just tell you, a Calvinist who said, it's God's will that some go to heaven and some go to hell. That's not what Peter was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. He was inspired to write that none should perish as God's will, that none should perish as God's heart, but that all should come to repentance. Do they all know? Jesus said no. There's many that will take the wide well-traveled path to damnation, but it's their choice. God didn't choose that. You guys feeling me? See, your future is in your hands. See, Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. The only condition on the peace of God, the pros prosperity of God in your life, the only condition is you trust God. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. Man, everything seems like it's failing. Everything's corrupt. Who do I trust? You trust God. Man, how can I trust God? Because he loves you. And here's the deal. There's one unconditional thing on this planet. Everything else bears conditions. Like you might say, well, I love you unconditionally. It's like, no, you don't. The only unconditional thing on this planet is God's love. So that's what operates in me. That's why I can trust God, because God loves me. That's why I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, because God loves me. That's why everything I put my hand to prosperous, because God loves me. What do, you, what, do you act like you're God's favorite? Oh, I know. That's how I choose to act. I do. I choose to act like there isn't anybody else. But if you were the only, dear God, if you were the only person on the earth, God would have gave his son. I know. I'm his favorite. God gave his son Jesus for me personally. You guys just reap the benefit because you get to live here on this earth. You get to breathe the air that I'm breathing. But God would have done it if it's just me. So now what happens? I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Oh, we don't want to. We don't want to shake the. We don't want to wake the devil up. We don't want to wake. The, we don't want to make the devil mad. Really, Jesus put me on this earth to rub the devil's nose in the defeat that he suffered at the hand of Jesus in the pit of hell. In in in, in his in his domain, where his his way was right, his way was powerful. What did Jesus do? He went down. It took all those Old Testament saints that we all adore. They all fought an enemy that controlled death. I have the same enemy. He doesn't control death with me anymore. 
Because Jesus took the keys to death and the grave. So now, guess what, partner? Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Guess what? Let me, let me just stoke the fire. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Do you know what that was? The biggest victory the world has ever seen. That same victory is in me now. Man, I'll tell you what I am. I'm refreshed. I'm going to pray for people that need to get their lives right with God. I'm going to pray for people that need to make Jesus Lord of their life. I'm going to pray for people that are going through some hell. You've heard this colloquialized almost. You're going through hell, don't stop. I don't need to buy postcards. I don't need a t-shirt. Hell is not going to last in my life. I've got a destiny on my life. And guess what it is? It's God's way of doing things. It's God's kingdom. It's heaven. Remember, our, he, Jesus said, they, they said, Jesus, we teach us to pray. Sure, I'll, I'll teach you to pray. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. You're amazing. Your kingdom's come. It's not a request. It's a statement. Your will is done. It's a statement. On earth as it is in heaven. Let's go. Come on. What are you doing? I'm just attracting heaven into my life. See, I'm speaking this. I'm muttering this. I'm meditating upon this day and night. But what are we doing? We're flipping, we're flipping through the, 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 the TikTok. We're, we're flipping through the algorithms. You know what's amazing? Is I've watched a few preachers on the YouTube, friends of mine. Now I've got all kinds of preachers on my YouTube. I don't have any haters of God on my YouTube. I don't. So there must not be any. There's only people like me out there. Isn't that amazing? That's a coincidence that's beyond coincidence. No, it's a freaking algorithm that's luring me into a trap. Guess what I feel? A red light. Guess what I'm going to do? Stop. Resist. Flee. You hear me? Stop. Resist. He's got to flee. That's my enemy. So... Let's get your life right with God. Let's make Jesus Lord of your life. The Bible says you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, and then let's hit back. Do you mind hitting, hitting back today? Let's, let's leave a mark on the devil today. And you'll go, well, I don't want to make him mad. Jesus made him mad. He's just mad because you made Jesus Lord of your life. So the only reason he wouldn't be mad at you is if you're going to hell. So if you're, if you're in here and you go, I'd rather... I'd rather just make a decision to deny Jesus and go to hell so I don't make the devil mad. Let me tell you how much I care about the devil being mad. I care about the devil being mad as as, as much as how many times sovereignty is is in the New Testament. Zero. The sovereign will of God is for me to be transformed in the image of his son. I'm transformed in his son by meditating in his word day and night. Do you guys know where I stand now? Is there any questions? Are there any questions? Let's all pray together. Father God, I give you my life. Jesus Christ. I said Jesus Christ. Devil, I want you to hear it. Come out of my mouth. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. I hope that upsets you. Because it's going to be every day, every step, every breath of my life is going to honor God with Jesus as Lord of my life. God, I thank you that I'm going to heaven and I'm living my life to rub the devil's nose in the defeat that he suffered at the hands of my Savior. God, I thank you the greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. And God, I thank you today that I'm created for good works. I'm gonna walk in them. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. God, you're amazing. God, thank you for loving me. And I'm loving you back with all of my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. I'm refreshed, God. So I'm going to act like it. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you so much for tuning in to Guts Church YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Chano Trevino, the assistant pastor here at Guts Church. And on behalf of our leadership team, our staff, our church, it's our hope that this message met you right where you are. If it did, I bet there's someone you know who could use the encouragement of this message in their life. And you sharing it with them can make all the difference. The mission of Guts Church is to help people win. And you can be a part of that simply by sharing, or better yet, inviting someone to tune into Guts Church online with you every week. Take that next step to be a part of what God is doing right now in this moment in time by being committed to showing up, placing a premium on God's word, and receiving all that God has for you. You can share this message, gather your friends for services, make it a priority to make this the place you want to be. God has so much for you. I truly believe that. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you soon.